Greetings, Vernon. My name is Karen Devino, and I am the superintendent of schools here in Vernon. I am so excited to be here with five guests. Notice they are all females, and we are going to talk about women in STEM today. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, one of the reasons I wanted to talk with my guests today on a superintendent spotlight is because they are real trailblazers in their field. And the five of you just recently attended a STEM uh, career day at SCCC, right? Um, and I think it was a really great experience for all of you. And I wanted to talk to you about a couple of things. And before we're done, I want our viewers at home to understand how important it is for women to be represented. Um, so if one of you is comfortable sharing maybe a couple of highlights of the day, things that you felt that were really exceptional, whether it was a presenter or an activity, something that really stood out for you. Anybody want to share? Do you want to share first? Um, I can start first, yeah. So we heard a lot of different presentations from females in STEM careers, mm -hmm. and they basically took us through how they got into their career and how it was difficult for them and where they found what they really wanted mm -hmm. to do. And then after the presentations, we got to go into little workshops with the presenters okay. and do like hands-on activities that had to do with what they were speaking in their presentations. Okay. So which, where were they from? Like what types of industry, what companies? Do you remember some of the companies that were represented that day? Thor Labs. Thor Labs, one? okay. Johnson and Johnson. Johnson and Johnson. One, there is one, one woman was from Picatinny Arsenal. Picatinny Arsenal, okay. And these are all major companies, right? So the potential for career advancement is pretty spectacular out there, especially for women in STEM because they're underrepresented. And then one of the things that we were talking about that I found fascinating was the path for women. How does the path for women differ than for men? We found that it was much more difficult for women to follow a direct path to their career. There was a lot of trial and error, but with men it's more direct. Yeah. So, you know, when I was speaking with the ladies off camera just a few minutes ago, you know, this really isn't uncommon for women. They say the path is like a jungle gym, right? It kind of goes like this. And for men, it's a, it's a ladder if you want to look at kind of a, a visual difference. And um, I know that the women who spoke with you, are, did they talk about being underrepresented in their fields and what it was like to be kind of maybe the only woman in their department or the only female lead in a tech area? Did they talk at all about that? They definitely did because they explained how not all the time was it all just women and it took a while for them to get with like-minded women and females and most of the time they were with just groups of men that were working with them so they had to overcome certain things such as like how you were saying before where men like move up quicker. Mm -hmm. They had to overcome things like that to get where they are today. So what does that do for a woman if she feels like she has to overcome things and maybe her path is met with more barriers how do you think that changes maybe how we approach a job or how do you think that changes things for us as females? I think it definitely makes a woman stronger because they have to fight for themselves more like in school and they're more independent so when they get to their job they can thrive, they can do well. Yeah, do the rest of you agree with that? Yeah, resilience I, is important. Resilience, yeah. yeah. I agree with Maggie and I also think that it makes it harder for younger kids to get into STEM fields because, and some of the presenters touched on this, how we don't see a lot of representation mm -hmm. in like the adults above mm -hmm. us, so we mm -hmm. don't see too many um, leaders in STEM yeah. who are female, so it's hard to envision our own path there mm -hmm. without having someone to see, but our presenters highlighted the fact that we were in a room of about 200 or so mm -hmm. other females that were interested in STEM and in STEM careers, so that was really empowering. Yeah, yeah that's really inspiring. And you've all hit on some things that are so important. So you all know that I'm the first female superintendent in Vernon, although I've been a superintendent in other places, but here I'm the first woman, right? You've always had men prior in this role. Um, you know, and it does definitely make you a little resilient because it's like, I know that I can do the job, right? And you feel the same way with robotics or engineering or calculus or some of the other applications, you know, you're used to doing in school. Um, the other thing that you talked about, about seeing yourself there, this is true for um, people of color, it's true for women, it's true for um, people who are classified as special needs, it's, it's true for the LGBTQ population. For anybody who doesn't see themselves reflected in a leadership role, they don't ever feel like they can get there. So when you, did you have a chance to speak with any of the women individually or was it just presentations? When we were in groups, we were allowed to speak with them. So, like, I know Becca went up to um, the got, uh, the man from Johnson and Johnson okay. and talked to him mm -hmm. about engineering. Yeah, there was one male presenter, and right. he gave gave a presentation kind of on all the different careers in STEM fields, which was 
super interesting because there was a lot of stuff that I didn't really think about, such as like packaging engineering okay. and how you package goods. So that was really cool to hear about that job because I would never really thought about someone doing that. Mm -hmm. And um, we, me and my friend Stephanie actually talked to him because he does um, kind of volunteer mentor work with mm -hmm. robotics teams in oh, the area. Wonderful. So we reached out to him and we're like, we run, Stephanie and I are the captains of Vernon's robotics right. team. So we were asking him if we could get someone to come in and like talk to us from um, Johnson & Johnson right. too. Okay, so I've got another question. I'm so excited about having the ladies here with us today. One of the things that I think of for STEM, and a lot of people don't think of it this way, is the creativity piece. So, Leanna, can you talk a little bit? You're, you're really like a theater person, yeah. right? So talk to me a little bit about how there's a connection between theater and STEM. Well, a lot in like engineering particularly is about like solving problems. And to be doing that, you got to think outside the box and have a, like a creative mentality for to find new solutions. Um, I remember one of the presenters uh, mentioning something about like trying to find new ways for nerve cells to regrow wow. because they take such a long time and that of course that requires to like really experiment and try new things and like be creative and stuff. Yeah and you know what listen I mean that's really the most exciting thing about learning anyway whether it's about theater it's about math or it's about engineering it's that opportunity to think outside the box to try something nobody else has tried before and you know even here in the school district we deal with challenges all the time and we're always looking for creative solutions so you never know folks we might be coming back to our representatives here to solve some of our district's problems um the last thing i guess that i would ask you is how do you feel when you are a, maybe the only female or one of a few females in your classes here at Vernon High School because it seems like that's kind of a trend, right? I mean, robotics, we've got a couple of female captains, but in um, computer science or in uh, maybe calculus or engineering, like, are some of you the only female amongst your classmates or maybe one of a few? Any of you have that experience here at the high school? Yeah, I'm one of three girls in my statistics class and there's 13 of us, so there's 10 males to three females. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely different because when she says like partner up, like everybody goes to a partner. <laughs> So all like the females, we all kind of stick together right. and we like to do things together because yeah. we're the only ones in that class. Yeah, and women and men think differently. And what about, we did say though that Vernon's a little progressive because we do have some uh, kind of balanced representation of women in some of our classes. Who shared that they have a balance? In our AP Biology class, we have seven boys and seven girls. And then in another class, we have eight girls and two boys. Yeah, so. You know what, so I mean in Vernon we've got so many wonderful things happening. Um, of course, um, there were 23 girls who went all together. Um, you know, we want to thank our teachers here at Vernon High School, uh, Ms. Shep, and who else went with you? Mrs. Foco. Mrs. And Foco. Mrs. Cape. And Mrs. Cape, that's right. So I'm so thankful for their leadership to try to expose you to career fields and opportunities. Anything else that you think might be important? Oh, this was the last question I wanted to ask you. For the viewers at home, I talk to them all the time about if you have a child in Rolling Hills or Lounsbury or Glen Meadow, when you get to Vernon High School, there are just tons of opportunities. So if you're thinking of a younger sister or maybe a neighbor that you have who has a, a young lady at home who's in second, third, or fourth grade, what would you tell them about trying something they haven't tried before or getting into engineering or into a STEM-related you know, subject in school? I think it's definitely important to get involved because it took me until this year to realize that I wanted to get involved with engineering. So I put that on like my schedule for next year. So it took me Wonderful. until like my sophomore year to realize it. But I wish I'd gotten more involved earlier. So like don't be afraid to get involved with it just because you're female. Yeah, I think that's great advice. Other things that you ladies are thinking of for the younger girls like at home. If women are outnumbered to the men in their class, they should use it as motivation to prove that they can do just what they can do. Yeah. I think you're right, and as you know, I mean, we have a female wrestling team here at the high school. You know, Vernon is really progressive, I think, in comparison to a lot of other places. So, you know, I couldn't be more proud of the accomplishments of not only the five ladies that are here, but also the way that you represent, you know, women in STEM and having opportunities to kind of, you know, pave the way for the girls and the women that are gonna come you know, after you. It's really, really important work. I hope the folks at home are proud about it. I know I am. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great week. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am here with Ms. Shep. I'm so excited to extend our conversation and talk more about STEM and about women in science, technology, engineering, math careers, and women in leadership in general. So, 
you're a woman in a science field anyway, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, you know, why was it so important to get our girls, the Vernon ladies, over to SCCC for that, for that career day? Why does that matter? Oh gosh, it's so important. Um, right now, women are very underrepresented in certain career paths, right? Yeah. Um, we always hear about the misrepresentation in STEM, specifically in your mathematics mm -hmm. and in your physics. And what research has found as, is that, especially at younger ages, middle school to high school, they need exposure yeah. to know what's out there, to know who's on their side, to feel connected. Females really have this need to feel connected, mm -hmm. and this is a good way for them to see that mm -hmm. because there still is a bias. Um, an unintentional bias right, for right, sure, right. Yeah. but there is a is a bias and, and students need to be exposed so that they understand that it's it's a growth mindset that's so important, right? Mm -hmm. They need to see that by exposure, they can learn and from that they can grow and they can be challenged and they can fit in and there is a culture that supports them. Yeah. So it was a great it was a great environment for them not only to see women and how they got to where they are and and their uh, journeys which I know I talked to one of the girls and she goes, I thought I had to know everything right now and now I realize I can choose my own way. And I mean, that's empowering. Yeah, that's very powerful. Especially for women, I, I think sometimes who feel that they do have to know everything. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, we didn't talk about it um, with the girls, but one of my questions is, um, how do you think men can help women in, in STEM related fields? Because Sometimes, you know, you talked about the kind of the social connection, that mentoring, that, that women, and it's really, really important for women. Mm -hmm. I wonder how men can help women, um, you know, get into STEM careers or even feel more confident about learning. Do you have some thoughts on that? Well, we have a wonderful program. I mean, not to be like all Vernon, but hey, all Vernon. Yeah. Because we have some wonderful gentlemen who are involved in the middle school with, the, with the engineering and the STEM and the coding, and then they bring it to here, and they're so supportive, and they're so caring and it's equal opportunity mm -hmm. and it's good for females to see it it's not a gender issue it really shouldn't yeah. be it's it's a knowledge issue it's a learning issue it's a leadership it's a growth and because they see so many men in these supportive roles mm -hmm. they feel very comfortable yeah. and I, I think over the past especially five years you've seen an increase in females reaching out with our amazing engineering program mm -hmm. and rooms and what we've done here at the high school and the programs and the CTE things we've instituted, it just provides them the experience and the opportunity. Now we have to bring some women in here mm -hmm. um, as role models, as mentors for them, mm -hmm. so they can take what they're learning here and just expand outward. I love that idea, and I think that's really important. So maybe one of the things that we want to look at, like you said, is getting those mentors. The ladies talked about speaking with folks from Thor Labs or even Disney, yeah. you know. So and those are really, really important aspects to uh, that trajectory. That's really important because women don't see themselves right in that top position, right, or even in a science field. And I think one of our ladies talked about packaging and some other engineering is everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. So. Um, other things you want to share maybe that you think are really important for folks at home to know about our program at the high school, how to get children involved, um, things that families can do maybe to support their young ladies at home who might have an interest, things that, that sure. you're thinking? Sure, great. Um, we have a very strong science program at, in Vernon Township School District. Yeah, it, it starts at the middle school and it's yeah. I mean, even lower, yeah, right? Even lower, yeah. Um, working all the way up. And I think everybody's very interested in bringing engineering to the classroom. Mm -hmm. The next generation science standards were rolled out about mm -hmm. five years ago, and they integrate engineering. Yeah. And as we, we become more proficient as educators and mm -hmm. bring this into the classroom, students are getting more comfortable with the hands-on, things that they never would have thought of before, so now they're willing to try new things. So that's exciting for our, our science program um, and uh, mathematics and engineering within Vernon. But also as far as like what we've been doing, we're slowly putting together like a network of teachers who are reaching out to different companies and to different um, colleges mm -hmm. who want to come up with a type of mentorship wow. for our young ladies and to let them know and to see what's out there. And not just the ladies, but the young men yep, as well for course. STEM. Yep. But it's just they need to realize that there is a support, there's a culture, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of summer programs, there's a lot of grants, there's a lot of wow. money, you know, there's That's a great. lot of things available to them. And we're, we're starting to, as teachers, come together 
and collaborate and to see what we can come up with to put together to support our, yeah. our young women. That's tremendous. You know, and everything that we do as educators to support our students helps them feel confident in their learning. That hands-on experiential instruction that you talked about at Next Generation Science Standards and really in teaching in general, any time that you have the opportunity to learn by doing, yes. you remember what you did, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. You know, so it's just a teaching style that speaks naturally to science fields um, and also to like theater and music, which is why I was really interested, you know, to hear that there was that connection you know for some of our folks so um, you know I can't thank you enough for taking our girls there um, and for kind of exploring the opportunities and we had some ladies that represented freshmen right so we didn't Absolutely. just have upperclassmen oh, no, no. on the panel today. Two freshmen, two sophomores and a senior yeah because it's important you know you already have some of the upperclassmen they're already bought in right, right right but to get some of the younger ones that really have aren't sure yeah. right you have to expose them to it because it could be that one person mm -hmm. that one thing they see and all of a sudden something ignites in them and yeah. inspires them and that's the light that sets them on their yeah. path absolutely and if it's the light that sets them on their path if you're look if you're gonna be a freshman next year and you yeah. haven't taken your classes yet think about trying an elective in science or in engineering um, or in mathematics or something that you haven't tried before it absolutely. might just be maybe you think it's an elective and then it becomes your passion. So um, thank you so much for all you do for our students. Thank you so much. Much appreciated.